for banks, 90% of their data is unstructured data. Historically, with OCR or intelligent document processing technology, it's been well suited to grab data from structured documents, from W-2s, from government forms, from licenses, passports, et cetera, but that's 10% of data. So what about the 90% that's really the biggest problem that you basically need a, a very large portion of people to review when they should be doing more mind-provoking tasks. So that's the problem we're out here to solve because when you can, can embed generative AI to review documents, now you can really make a lot of impact and do something that can you know, do it in a, a much basically more impactful way. So the big opportunity, if I understand what you're saying, is in the, the realm of unstructured documents because that's the bulk of what banks are processing, that's the big opportunity that this tool solves. If it's more difficult for a person to review it, it's typically more challenging for technology to review it, so therefore you need better technology. So technology has been there, so absolutely, that's exactly the issue. And then out of that 90% of data that's unstructured, half of that unstructured data lives in documents. And so many banks, other industries as well, use a very large portion of documents in everything they do. In the lending world, I mean, a residential loan application can be 250 pages plus. Some of our, our banks, on who are lenders, they'll just ask us, hey, we don't want any data extracted. All we want is identify and classify what the documents are with the loan package. So then our processors and our underwriters can just know what pages are the appraisal documents are on, or what pages our identity documents are, or what pages our income documents are on. So this technology gets really deep, but even at the base level of it can yield a lot of value. So it can help institutions organize their information so you can section off little places. Okay, the appraisal documents are here, and, you know, declarations are here, so you can just kind of find certain areas. Why would that be useful? Because that seem, to me that just seems, it's in a way it's kind of like a search engine mm -hmm. of the document, but why is that useful for banks? So if I asked you and I had gave you 250 physical pages, Jason, and I said, I'd be like, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not dealing with that. Who, who, who's, the, who's the, tell me all the borrowers in this document? So I'd have to go, and that's the way it's done now. It's like page <laughs> by page by page. All right. So this is happening at scale. Lots of employees, lots of documents. How much is, is wasted? How much time is wasted on these kind of tasks? It's, I, don't know, I don't have the exact number. I wish I had that exact statistic. I don't, but it's a lot of time because you need to make sure that it's, it's, it's right, it's 100% accurate, so you have to spend a lot of time, and, and it's, at times it takes a very highly skilled individual who has a lot of knowledge of the process, who's also doing that piece of the process, just because the, the bank or lender needs to make sure that they're doing correctly, and that's not where you want to be. You want to have that person, like an underwriter, underwriting more loans. It's not only more efficient from an operational standpoint, but then you can generate more revenue because you're underwriting more loans. That's just, that's just in one world, that's just lending. There's the positive operations, there's the compliance, there's so many forms, there's pay stubs, there's bank statements, legal contracts, there's so many forms that are unstructured that you can use this kind of technology to, for example, in our tool, get a document, put it in the tool, data is extracted right away, no matter what the document is. That has never before happened before. So that just serves up the information because the goal here is, it's not to make decisions, like the tool is not making decisions, it's just finding and extracting what is already there in the document. So what's the relationship between taking that extracted information, whether it's policy numbers, it's names, it's looking at certain sections, with automating it? I love that question, and especially the, the, the decision piece. We, we want our clients always to have humans making decisions. We can have the best technology in the world. We're never going to advocate for the technology to make decisions for you. We want the technology to take over the tasks for you so that you don't have to do it. But when it comes to making decisions, you always want a human doing that, especially when their decisions are like, am I going to give this individual a, a, a $1 million loan? Like That's something that you don't necessarily need AI to do. It's actually worth it to have a person spend the time to do that. But the technology and the AI can make sure that you can manipulate data in a way to strengthen decision making. So that's the general idea here in terms of what you're doing and make things faster. Instead of me giving you a 250 page loan package and you trying to use control find to figure out who the borrowers are, it can be as simple as putting the loan package in our tool 
and it immediately tells you the borrower, you can ask it, who are the borrowers? And then it's gonna tell you, it's John Doe, it's Gilbert, it's whoever that person, individual is. Can you give us like, examples, some of the clients, what are they doing you know, in terms of in the banking and finance, what, how are they using the tool, how are they, you know, what are the use cases examples that we yeah. can talk about? So great question, so one very popular one is signature detection. So does a signature exist when the, within the document? Where does it exist? Is it the right person? So we actually have to use a mix of AI and machine learning for that. So to figure out if it's the right person, that's easy because it usually says under the signature line, the person's name. The actual signature, AI is actually not good at that. That's the one thing that AI is not good at is the second signature. So we have to use machine learning for that piece. But everything else, AI is ex excellent at. As I mentioned earlier, classifying documents. So if this is a 250 page loan package, saying, hey, page one to five are my appraisal documents. Page 34 to 36 are my identity documents. That's also a big piece. Um, and it can be extracting any data points, like the borrower piece. That's very common is not only extracting who the borrower is, making sure it's the correct borrower, making sure that maybe there are co-borrowers. It's very common as well. That gets more complex and that's something technology can pick up right away as well. So there's a, a, a lot of use cases, but it can do a lot of things, even things like face detection. So if there's an identity document, it can actually detect the person's face. So you got a passport or driver's face. license, yeah. then you just, you can verify if the person is there. So the idea is you can extract or review any data, it can be a face, can be text, that's what the tool can be basically, you know, do very well at. So talk about the, because there's a lot of talk here at this conference about compliance and security, so because this can be done so quickly, how does that compare to the security concerns? Now it's instant, before it took you know, some time to train, months even, so how do, how do leadership, how are they supposed to balance this speed versus risk piece? That's a key question because Banks are consistently monitoring risk, and with all of our banking clients, their main focus is mitigating risk with automation and bolstering compliance, which it can do that, especially the bot piece, which is so simple. But one of, our, one of my clients actually told me, I'll never forget this, that one of the biggest risks to a bank is inefficiency. And if you really think about that, it's very important because if a bank is inefficient, year over year over year, well, year over year they will not be a bank anymore because they will either be acquired or they will not be able to sustain or compete because they're that inefficient. You, have, you need to focus on efficiency. In terms of security, uh, with our tool, we're HIPAA compliant, SOG2 compliant. We you leverage Microsoft's large language models and GPT in order to uh, you know, to leverage their large language model instead of using, for example, OpenAI. So it's more secure because we leverage the API to go, you know, to GPT. So that's another part too that is, you know, better for banks and insurance companies that have more security concerns. But I think it's a very important question because if something's happening that fast, it's like, hold on, what just happened? Where's my data? Like, so I think it's very important. Yeah, and then because this is, w would you look at document processing? It's kind of like the first kind of the first step then, and the next step is, okay, now we're going to do some work with it, we're going to do some automation. Like, how, how is the conversation, like the order of things, if there is? Like, yeah. how does that flow? So, the way it typically, so we're, we're like an end-to-end -end business automation platform. The way it typically works is that a bot will go in and grab a document, wherever it is. So, the document can be in an email, the document can be in a specific folder, it could be in Microsoft SharePoint, it could be in a core banking system, it could be in a, in a low and rigid system, it could be wherever the document is, the bot goes and grabs it the same way a human would. The bot grabs it, puts it into our engine, AI comes in, extracts the data, bot comes back in, grabs the data that's been extracted, puts it back where that bank wants it. It could be Excel, it could be anywhere. And that's the general way it works, but a large language model is like the brain, is like basically what the engine is going to, to think and then it's focused on one specific document or set of documents, so that's why it's highly accurate versus if you just go to BARD or ChatGPT, it can give you very random answers because it's so general and there's no constraints around it. So the constraints are helping? So how, how is this important? So I mean, who, who makes these constraints? We do. So aside from the AI piece, our platform is an intelligent document processing engine. 
So once a document or set of documents come in, the first thing that happens is that if it's crooked, the engine will automatically make it straight. It'll start reading the document. And then when we're actually going to extract data, that's when we leverage the large language model or the AI piece to use its brain to then focus only on the document it's seeing. So it will answer only questions based on the document or set of documents that it's reading. And that's why it's so accurate because we are limiting it. Again, it's a very general technology that can do anything, but to really yield and derive value from it, you have to make sure that you make it very specific for what you want it to do, which is why it's so good at managing unstructured data in a controlled environment. What are some of the questions you've been getting? Because you've been doing demos all day and then we have this main one. What are some of the questions that folks are saying? That like, What comes to mind first? Is there a theme? Absolutely. So the first question is always, the only issue with the tool is that it's almost too smart for its own good. So if I give it an appraisal document, or like even like a, an ERLA, a Uniform Residential Loan Application for appraisals, it'll literally grab all the data on it. And sometimes forms have a lot of data on it. So that could be like, 60, 80 data points that a firm doesn't always need. Usually, even if a form is unstructured, banks typically want the same data from every form, typically, mm. from every form, even if it's unstructured. So what they'll say is, hey, I don't need all of those data points. I just want the borrower information. I just want the price of the loan. I just want these 20 data points. So we'll simply configure it so that it only extracts those 20 data points. Or some, some will say, hey, I, I, at the beginning of every document, I want you to classify it. Tell me what, what the document is and a quick summary of it. So we'll just do a summary. So you, you can you can literally say, what, summary of document. It'll tell you a summary. So that's what we're seeing now is configuring based on what a bank actually wants versus just, hey, it grab all the data from this document. So then it's kind of just distilling it. It's customizing it so that it gets that consistent output. So you want these 20 fields. Anytime you have a document come in, it's going to extract that information. It can be configured to do that consistently. Absolutely, and, and the point is that things are changing because in the bot world, it's a low code platform. You typically need someone with who is at a maximum a developer, but at a minimum technically savvy enough to understand how code works. Whereas with this tool, you and I, not to diminish your intelligence, but you and I, it can go, even if we're not technical, we don't need to use need, We don't need to know C-sharp, you know, so. Precisely, that, that's the point. So that's why this is extremely valuable because anyone can use it. Okay, and any, any final thoughts about how this tool is going to impact banking? If, if you ever are looking at extracting data from documents and someone tells you, hey, let's, let's do it, let's extract data from that invoice and let's uh, set up a, a machine learning model that's going to grab data based on this coordinate, like just run away. That's, gonna, <laughs> that's not going to be the best solution, it's going to cost you a lot of money and it will be very limited in accuracy. The now, the present, and the future is leveraging generative artificial intelligence to extract data from documents off the simple fact that it understands context of data the same way a human does, but really better.